This episode of We Like Shooting Double Tap is brought to you by Black Rhino Concealment, Rubber Dummies, Neomag, and Bowers Group. <laughs> okay. <coughs> Welcome to We Like Shooting Double Tap, episode 105, where we answer your questions, ask a few of our own, and touch base on gun industry news. Our panel tonight is everyone's favorite gun posse. We got the owner of River's Edge Tactical and Range, Jeremy Paz, Derek. Joining us from Michigan, the machine gun Moses, Aaron Krieger. The extremely hideous and unattractive Nick Lynch is beside me. My name is Sean Heron, and I want to welcome you to the show. Sean, that's not what it says. That is. Oh, wow, that actually is what it says. (laughs) Yeah. That's not what it's supposed to say. (laughs) I I read that straight from it man it's supposed to say the attractive one. Oh no it says extremely hideous i mean let, let's be fair if one of us was going to be on the cover of tiger beat if it one would, of it, it would, would be me you what is what is tiger beat i, I have the hair no f- off aaron and i are millennials you little piece of <laughs> 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 hey Right now, Black Rhino Concealment has a sale going on 15% off your entire purchase. Man, they got the sales after sales after sales. And all that means for you is that you can conceal carry your handgun. You can conceal carry or even open carry your handgun and magazines uh, with no problem. Nick. Yeah. Did you recently just use the the Black Rhino Concealment uh, mag pouches for a class? Uh, No. Oh, yeah. You're right. That was me. I yeah, you did. Yeah, I put them on a belt. So I'm not very tactical, uh, so I just try to wear you know normal everyday stuff. He's and not then, tactical. He's tactifool. All right, that's fair. So I used the the Black Rhino Concealment Universal Mag Pouches, which we gave a ton of away at our Firearms Radio Network listener meetup in Indianapolis, and uh, lots of Oscar Mike wallets as well with the WLS logo. Kind of like this one that I've been sitting on for, I don't know, maybe two years. Still in great shape. So long. Probably smells terrible, though. It it really God, does. It I can like smell farts. it from here. I, I, would assume, I would assume that, you know, when, uh, back in the day when you had those watches and you'd pull them off and you'd smell your wrist where the watch was all day. Yeah. And it was like, that's what I think your wallet would smell like. Well, it actually smelled like French fries, which was confusing for everybody. No, no. <laughs> no, it didn't. It smells like literal ass. All right. That's, <laughs> yeah. But if you would like one to hold up as well, and you, you know, we're all constantly getting guns all the time. I see you guys posting out there. I know you're getting guns a lot. So here's the thing. Go to BlackRhinoConcealment.com. Use coupon code WLSMOFO. Save 10% off. It's easy. It's fun. And I promise you're going to like it. Let's get into this. Oh, well, that was lame. Yeah. All right. You just actually scared me a little bit. <laughs> well, it was, the first one was so lame. I had to go I had to go hard. I might, I might have f***ed a little bit. But uh, this is our segment, Would You Rather, where Aaron looks up stuff on the internet, finds something, and then puts a ridiculous question to us that Jeremy never answers. I try to answer truthfully. Nick tries to answer answer truthfully, and Aaron tries to answer truthfully. Uh, what do you have for us tonight? All right, guys, we're going two barrels, double the fun. Now, would you rather have a double barreled 1911 or a double barreled sawed off shotgun? Double barreled sawed off shotgun. Yeah, I, I'm in the same really? boat. Uh, I I I, li- I literally have a double barrel shotgun. Yeah. Mm. See, what so is it sawed off? I'm sorry. I mean, I. I could, but it's not currently, right? <laughs> is, is it currently but sawed I could off? Very easily. Well, no, but it, but it, it is not, not currently. currently no. Then shut uh, the f- up. <laughs> shut the f- up, Aaron. <laughs> Aaron. Called and out, sir. Aaron, what would you rather have? I would rather have the double barrel sawed off shotgun. Listen, I'm usually the guy who's like, I need all the ammo I can get. But at the same time, the cool factor and the fear factor. If someone, you know, someone looking at a double barrel, uh, double barrel nineteen eleven, they're going to laugh at you or just be like so amazed. They, they, they just, they probably just stand there. They look at a double barrel sawed off shotgun and they're going to run or you do exactly what you tell them to do. Yeah, I mean, first off, who the fuck wants a double barrel nineteen eleven? Is that like I carry a forty five because they don't have a forty six? <laughs> I carry a ninety. It's a That's double barrel forty five. <laughs> but I was, I was inhaling in my vape, so I was like, ah, <laughs> Rob, uh, robbed. So robbed. the obvious answer here is the sawed-off double-barrel shotgun. I don't know if you guys have seen the movie uh, Killing Them Softly with Brad Pitt, but two guys at the beginning of the movie go in to rob a poker game, and uh, they have a shotgun that is so sawed-off that the end of the shotgun shells oh, actually stick out. I've seen one of those in real life, actually. <laughs> yeah. Uh I, I would go with the sawed-off double barrel. 
All right. Does that actually work? I mean, it would just be like, boom. I mean, there's yeah. No, there's no pressure. I, mean, I, I think it would just sort of go everywhere, and I don't think you'd get great pressure. Yeah. I let's. I, I really want to do it. it, it it's an AOW, right? It would yeah. work because shotgun powder. It would work because shotgun powder is very fast burning, very well. I, I, but I don't think you'd have that much energy, and especially with the shells <laughs> sticking out beyond the end of the barrel, uh, I, I think the spread would be crazy. What about with those minis that you have? Those mini shells? Uh, well, I mean, the mini shells wouldn't stick out beyond the end of the barrel, so they would if you did it right. Oh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is true. So the barrel would be cut behind the hinge. <laughs> yes. All right. Um, so yeah, I think that's the answer, and uh, let's get, let's go further. Ah, oh, there's that sound again. I hate that sound. All right, guys. First off, well, here. How about this? Neomag. Uh, did you know that Neomag has a YouTube channel and that they actually just put out a video of their adventures to the NRA annual meeting? Yeah, I knew that. Okay. Jeremy? Did you know that? Oh, I'm sorry. Never mind. No, go ahead, Aaron. What? What? Well, there's two guys at Neomag. There's right? Greg, the owner and pr- the owner and proprietor. There you go, TJ. And uh, Dusty, his faithful compadre. So Dusty came up to me. He's like, hey, I'm with, you know, hey, I'm with, you know, I'm with what's his face? Neomag. Yeah. No, uh and he introduces himself to me and I'm like, "All right, nice to meet you." And it doesn't click until we, I got home and I'm like, "Oh, d- I was such a, you know, you're such a d- like I was. I yeah. felt so bad. Not, it wasn't like I was trying to avoid or not talk to him. I was just like, "I'm I'm in the middle of something. Had I known who he was, I would have spent some time talking to him about his product because I really like his product, but because of, you know, I just feel bad. And if he's listening right now, I'm sorry. Man, you're you're a real d- so, I kind of feel like it. I, I was looking at their website today, and they have all of those limited edition oh, ones. Yeah. So they have one that is carbon fiber, and then it has titanium hardware, and I want it so bad. Dude. It's so hot. Yeah, their custom shop is so freaking hot. awesome. They also How bad have, do you want it? So bad. Yeah. I would do terrible things to you, Aaron. Yeah, but you did what? that in Indianapolis. Yeah. Wait, what? Uh, so, yeah, they have like ones that are painted up like uh, – like, the Empire, Empire uh, from uh, also Star, the, War, the, Star Wars, it, the First Order, Star Wars, and, the, yeah. the Empire, the Rebel Alliance, and the the First Order. Oh, I didn't see the Rebel Alliance ones. That, uh, that they might be awesome. sold out actually, but they were just available the other oh, day. Oh man, on May fourth, yeah. I'd be. Oh, that makes sense. Or yeah. May fifth. So yeah, check them out. Neo the neomag dot com coupon code is WLS ten gets you ten percent off all day every day. And now we're gonna answer some questions. Burn when you pee. Unsure about your relationship? Why can't you use forty five and a nine millimeter? Get your questions answered on hashtag Dear WLS. Visit WeLikeShooting dot com slash Dear WLS to submit your question. Submit. Uh, so first off, Tex D says, which way can I go without a tax stamp? Pistol to rifle or rifle to pistol? And I say, always go mouth to ass, never ass to mouth. Oh, so you can go from pistol to rifle back to pistol. Oh, shit, I thought this was a euphemism. But you can never go rifle to pistol. Correct. Wait, can I go rifle, pistol, rifle, pistol, rifle, pistol? No. no. If it starts as a rifle, it can go, cannot I'm sorry, be can I go pistol. pistol, rifle, pistol, rifle, pistol, rifle? Yes, you yes. can. Okay. So so you can take a handgun, you can put it into a carbine conversion kit, and then you can convert it back to a handgun. However, once something is a rifle, you can never convert it back to a handgun. Yes. Or if it starts as a as a rifle, you can never convert it to a handgun. It, instead of a handgun, it will be an S, uh, S, SBR or an AOW or something along those lines. I, I actually have a question for Jeremy. Jeremy. Can you okay. hear me, buddy? Um, yeah. The, the shockwave, is that considered a mm-hmm. uh, a rifle if you wanted to conceal carry it, which no. you wouldn't be able to, or it, can you? Uh, is it considered a pistol? Neither. It's neither. So can you conceal carry it? No, because of the overall. No, length. it's not either. It's yeah. It, it's other. Wait. So th- it's this one. An other. This one is actually really interesting. So it is technically an other. However. Uh, as I understand it, if you read some of the laws, it is technically an other, right? But if you conceal it, part of being an other means that the uh, that it cannot be concealed. However, if you conceal it, it becomes an, becomes an AOW, which requires a tax stamp. 
Yeah. That is weird. It is. So so if you took a shockwave and you tucked it under a trench coat, suddenly it requires a tax stamp. Okay, well what what if I you were you had it in your vehicle and it was loaded? Uh it that would depend on the state, on the state oh, yeah. Uh, oh, Ohio would it would be an AOW because you're concealing it because the vehicle conceals the fire. Firearm in the state of Ohio. Yeah, and in Colorado, the vehicle is an extension of your home, so it doesn't Ish. matter. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, isn't that weird? All right. See, I think that's a good question. I did well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I don't have to read the next one. No, uh, <laughs> Nick can read the next one. Today. Oh, you want me to start now? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, Duke M, which I assume stands for Nukem, but backwards. It, yeah. Um,. Please recommend AR pistol in five five six that costs under one k. Wait, Mecom. That's Nukem backwards. Mecom. Oh yeah, <laughs> me caveman. Me. <laughs> it's all over your head and chest. Uh, my recommendation for an AR pistol in five five six that costs under one k is build your own. Well, yeah, and we actually just had a guy in our Patreon group, uh, Mark R, I believe, was yeah. the one who said, "I'm going to build this," and uh, you know, he's asking, you know, under a thousand bucks. I literally took. I spent ten minutes uh, just going through advertisers and their websites and stuff, and I was able to put together one for about seven hundred and eighty-eight bucks using all WLS advertisers. So it's easy, man. It's uh, it's actually super super easy. Uh, not much required at all. I mean, Faxon, Manicor Arms, Brownells, um, not not a big deal. Yeah. You could do this easily. I, I would say a sim, a sim build your own. Jeremy, any go, any go other? Me. Other suggestions, maybe, uh, or even Nick or Aaron, any any stuff that is pre-assembled for under a grand for a pistol, AR pistol, yeah. Nick? Just right carbines, maybe? Uh, honestly, I mean, that's not an AR, though. Uh, I Just just build your own. Yeah, it's good, man. It's, you, you can do it, like, decently for, like, 600 bucks. Yeah. Well, that, I mean, that whole kit that you guys just put together was with the, with the, with the optic? Uh, the yeah. arrow precision. How much was that? Six hundred. Uh, that that wasn't it, an arrow it was precision. I, State I, Army. I understand that. Yeah. I understand that. But how much was it? Uh, s- including optic and mount, six hundred bucks. Yeah. So, but I if mean, you understand that, why did you say it? No, I understand it. It's not a pistol. No, it's, no, it wasn't an arrow precision. Yeah, that wasn't the brand. Arrow. Oh, arrow. Uh, oh, I'm it, sorry. Yeah, it was. A, it was a PSA, and yeah, it, it was very cheap. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So it's it's, it's easy to do. Is, yeah. is my point. Oh, yeah. So it was like with the, the, the optic was like two hundred dollars. So I mean, you guys put basically put together an AR. Yeah, and I feel like after shooting that optic, Bushnell owes me two hundred dollars. Because that thing, dude. We're about to do an L, uh, L uh, low power LPVO yeah. roundup. I think I have eight or nine of them now, and we're just going to compare them all against each other. But Wait. I guarantee you, Everything else because Bushnell is going to lose. But we have maybe, maybe we, just got a we bad have one. eight or nine. I have eight or nine of them. <laughs> maybe, maybe you just got a bad. Let me look through mine and see if how, how the dim the light. Oh is. no! Go go look through yours yeah. and then punch yourself in the dick because it's equal. As I recall, I remember you complaining <laughs> about some of the th- same things, Aaron. Yeah, yeah. I mean that reticle. Like maybe it's not supposed to be used for CQB type stuff or even kind of lower range stuff. But I'm mad just thinking about it. Yeah. So Bushnell, the, the one, one, what is it, one to four first focal plane LPVO. I, I, I feel like, uh, you know, like Star Wars, like, you were the chosen one. <laughs> Dude, yes. You had so much going for you. Yes, yes. <sighs> okay. I'm okay. Uh, Jeremy, why don't you take the next one? Uh, Sh- Sheehan D. I think it's Sean. Says- Oh, Sheehan. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, Sheehan, Sheehan D says, Hey, Jeremy, M1A or SOCOM 16? Not the stupid CQB version. Um, that depends. Do you want to do room clearing or do you want to do like national match stuff? I mean, you could room clear with an M1A. I mean, you could. It'd be very difficult. <laughs> the concussiveness of it would you clear could room. room. You, 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 could, you, could, you, could, you could room clear with a f***ing boat or too, but I don't recommend it. Yeah, you could. Oh, dude, I want to see that. Yeah, I, I want a room clear with a boat or like a like a room clear with like a fifty bm like a Barrett. <laughs> that would be amazing. Boom. Like the walls are uh, uh, the concussive force just knocks everything down. But he does say not the stupid CQB version, the actual SOCOM sixteen. But I mean, it's still a CQB 
style gun. Yeah, I mean, it's that's a the it's point. a short like, barrel. It's, it's like an M4 versus an yeah, yeah. I yeah. So what's your I answer? Mean, I got an M1A. I like I, I like my M1A. I prefer my M1A. Yeah, it's around here somewhere. I would pick the M1A uh, as well, Nick. <laughs> Uh, I, I would honestly probably go with the SOCOM 16 and not for any practical reason, just because I like short barrels. All right. Aaron, I go with so, the Nick. Says says the guy who like Nick what? what, Jeremy? What, uh, would you, would you machine that three? What Nick machine that 300 wind mag barrel down to like oh. over 14 inches? I, I did not machine that down. That was a mistake made by somebody else. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that I, that I happily accepted. Uh, that's that's great, uh, but yeah, I mean, I I like I like short barrels. They're easier to maneuver and stuff, uh, especially on a rifle like that. Unless you're going with like Jeremy mentioned, like a national match or something like the the, the M1A platform, the M14 platform is not like going to be a super accurate platform. So I'm I, the way I see it, I'm like I'll go short, put a can on it or whatever, and uh, have a good time. There you go. I mean, that's not true. There's there's some there's some M14 guns oh. out there that are pretty damn accurate. No, no, I'm not I'm not disputing that. But if you're gonna buy like a off the shelf M1A, not not necessarily like an uh, oh, yeah. a national match or whatever or whatever, but just like a an M1A, it, it's not gonna be a tack driver. Jeremy, it's probably mine's probably what. Nick asked you a question, and then there was like a seven minute pause while we waited for the <laughs> the signal to be transmitted to you. Okay. So forget what I said. Did I ask I a question? Say, I think uh, I made a statement. There's uh, a... Yeah. <laughs> there's a... Uh, I don't even know what we're doing now. <laughs> Me either. I don't so, know what's happening. So the statement I made, Jeremy, was that just in, uh, excluding like the national match stuff and the high-end stuff, uh, like a Springfield M1A just off the shelf is not going to be a particularly accurate gun. Um, so in my opinion, there's no reason to go with the longer barrel uh, because the extra velocity you're going to get out of that, you're not really going to see an incredible amount of accuracy to make that extra velocity worth it, right? Like, if we're talking like a uh, 3 MOA rifle, why go with a long barrel? Because, you know, at 1,000 yards, you're going to be looking at a pretty big group, so you Mm -hmm. might as well just go short. and Minute of barn door. Yeah, uh, so you might as well go short and have something handy and easy to swing around and point. All right. Aaron, next question. Uh, Next question is from uh, Buck H. (laughs) God damn. Stop brushing your teeth, <laughs> you f-ing weirdo! I swear to God, you don't have a toothbrush on, on, your, on your desk. No, this, I don't have a f-ing toothbrush on my desk. This is a perfect question for Aaron. Yeah, Aaron, what is your experience with Caltech products? Like, dislike? I'm thinking of getting the Suck 16. I mean, the <laughs> SU 16C. Thanks. All right, so let me let me let me lay it all out for you uh, in regards to my experience with Caltech. My first gun was the uh, was a Caltech and. Um, I loved it. I, I, I ended up uh, selling it and getting an, uh, some other stuff. You had the PLR-16, um, right? Yeah, the PLR-16, uh, which was basically an AR pistol. Or is it the PLR-15? Uh, PLR-16. I don't even remember anymore. so long ago. Yeah, it was a 16. Yeah. And I loved it. I thought it was great. Um, it's a, basically an AR pistol. Um, Can I tell the story of why you ended up with that? Yeah, 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 yeah. So when we first started getting into guns, Aaron uh, told his wife, uh, who wasn't 100% down with it, and she's like, okay, well, you don't need a rifle, but you can get a pistol. So Aaron f-ing buys a PLR-16. <laughs> yeah, it was <laughs> like is, the loophole. Yeah, God, f-ing, stop brushing your teeth. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> it was the loophole. It was awesome. It was. It was great because it was like, ha, 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 ha. Um, all right, so the second – Caltech uh, I was introduced to was the PF9, which is a uh, their their compact pistol, and I hated it. it sucked. It was just terrible because it's so snappy, so small, so snappy. It hurt my hand. Did not like it. Dislike. Um, a lot of the Caltech products I've used, I actually like. I I, I think Caltech makes really good products. They just have they're the only firearm that they make the only firearm that I actually dislike. Out of all the guns in the world, they make the gun that I dislike. All their other guns are fine. They just they just happen to be the company that makes the gun that I don't like. All right, that's fair. <clears throat> Nick, any experience or opinions on Caltech? Uh, in in my experience, Caltech makes some really cool concept firearms, <laughs> but the execution tends to be lacking. So, like, I I love uh like the 
what the PLR is it? Um, the uh, the twenty two mag pistol and the carbine. The uh, PLR twenty two. Yeah, I, I I love those. The CMR. Uh, well, there's the CMR and then the PMR, oh. right? Is the pistol and the CMR is the yeah. carbine. Uh, I yeah. I love those. Those things are badass. Um, I I'd love to have like a SBR CMR because that's about as close as I'll ever come to an MP7. Um, I uh, they, they, hey. they do make some really cool stuff. Uh, Henry, <laughs> this hole just pop out. <laughs> I was about to. Ask. Oh, now who's now who's dogs making noise? Sorry, I forgot. I thought I was muted. Sorry, because <laughs> because you're. All- <laughs> I, was but, uh, back. I didn't want them to chase people around. All right, I'm, I'm but as now. as far as quality wise goes, I have not been super impressed. In fact, a lot of uh, the Keltec firearms, it seems like, well, some of the Keltec firearms, it seems like Ruger has taken and improved. You know, like the uh, P3AT uh, Ruger made the LCP, which is like an improved version <laughs> of that. I don't think that's. Uh, no, look at look look at them side no, by side. I, look at the designs. You're right, but I don't, and you're like you're like one is an interesting concept. I don't think, one is actually built properly. I don't think they were trying to improve it per se. No, it, <laughs> it's better. It really is. Uh, so my <laughs> it is my experience no, it is. is I've shot some Celtics that I really enjoyed. I've shot some Celtics that I didn't love very much. Like I fucking hate the KSG man. I hate it. But the KG uh, mm-hmm. KG twelve KG seven. What? The, the KG7, the the new shotgun that they put out at SHOT Show. Oh, the like single tube one? Yeah. That one actually is kind of cool. Yeah, it feels pretty awesome. Yeah. So I, I like some Celtic. I don't like other Celtic, uh, you know, and it's just like everything else. I like. My, my, my line with Celtic is they do really interesting and innovative shit and it bites them in the ass a lot. Yeah, they, they have supply chain issues as well. And the thing is, is like, so Chad from Celtic is, uh, is a buddy of ours and he's like, yeah, man, we're the expand constantly we're constantly adding tooling and and lines and they've just got a lot of demand for the products that they make and because of that there's constantly supply chain issues no matter how much they expand no matter how many guns they put out there it seems like they're constantly running into issues with supply and buying uh, buying a caltech is like buying a video game that's still in beta yeah i guess it's yeah it's like it's like buying a caltech is like buying a first run uh car yeah Buying a Keltec is like is like buying an Xbox One. I just go on an Amazon and I order it. Well, at least it'll show up. <laughs> <laughs> Josh A says I've been shooting my new six five Creedmoor hashtag hipster rifle with an MOA scope since I've had it. However, I'm looking to upgrade the scope. The new scope I'm looking at has a better reticle for mills and the same reticle for MOA. The main draw for the mill reticle is a point zero three mill dot in the center of the crosshairs for a longer longer distance precision shots. Would you consider switching to MOA from MOA to Mills to get a different reticle? Jeremy, I'm going to start with you. What? I think he's gone. Nick, I'm going to start with you. Sorry, okay. I was muted. Oh, okay. Jeremy, I'm going to start with you. Uh, I didn't read. I didn't hear the question, so go with Nick first. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Jeremy, you read the question. Nick, I'm going to start with you. Uh, I, I like MOA. Um, it's it's really easy to do all of the conversions and stuff, so I, I would probably stick with him that way, personally. Jeremy. He's probably muted yes. again. Uh, what, would you consider... No, oh, Jeremy, do you prefer MOA or Mills? I prefer MOA. Would you consider switching from... The, M- math, is e- the math is easier for Mills than my, or for MOA in my head. Yeah. So if you could get a mill reticle with a point zero three mill dot in the center of the crosshairs for longer distance precision shots, would you consider switching from MOA to mills? No, I, I, I give me a, a crosshair with a you know a decently small need a fucking point oh three mill dot dot in the middle. Just give me a fine crosshair. Yeah, I, for me. And I'm not an expert by I any don't see, means. I don't see. I don't see. I don't see how putting a .03 mil dot in the in the middle of the crosshairs, like if your crosshairs are smaller than that, to the point the mill, why are you going to make the center of it even bigger? Just give me the cross. You know what yeah. I mean? Makes sense. Yeah, I agree with that too, actually. And so the the optics that I have that have MOA, I kind of, I, I do like them. And again, it's math. Aaron, opinion on this? Whatever Nick says, because he seems to be on fleek tonight. Boom. Uh, Nick, next question. All right. 
Oh, hey, is that Josh A? I think Josh A is watching, actually. Piper Perry says, hey, oh, sexy Hold beast. on a second. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, Josh says, yeah, that's the problem. The crosshair is too thick at higher magnification. So first focal plane zooms in. Crosshair is too thick. He's looking for that dot because it's smaller than the crosshair. Now, understanding that, Nick, what would you think? I would look at a different optic. Interesting. Jeremy? Yeah, I want to know what optic. Yeah. All right. So we'll wait for him to do that while Nick takes the next question. So Piper says, hi, sexy beast. Piper Proton. No, Perry. It's better this way. Just go with it. (laughs) (laughs) Says, hey, sexy beasts. Jeremy gets it. Oh, I got it, too. (laughs) I've seen that couch meme, bro. (laughs) Just purchased. I wish I got it. <laughs> just purchased a Henry Lever Action Forty One Rim Mag and looking to place some optics on the rail. I've considered the Strike Eagle by Vortex, but it's too large. We'll be using this for hunting, no more than a hundred yards. What optics would you suggest? A red dot. Hmm. A hundred yards I, is. I, I would con- nothing. I would concur. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, put a, a put a decently, like, a decently small. Yeah, put put an endpoint micro clone on there. You know, some something that is that size, uh, and and call it a day. Jeremy. Yeah, I mean, I'm with Nick. Uh, something like a Romeo Five or a Hollow Sun, or or yeah. or some that uh, just some a decent red dot. And uh, uh, I don't understand the point of an optic for a hundred. If you're going to go that route, uh, I would do a, a red dot, especially if you're trying to not break the bank, and uh, uh, you don't because you know you shouldn't need magnification. Yeah. All right. So going back to the previous question. Oh, whoa, from, whoa, whoa! Hey, hey, hey! <laughs> oh, Aaron. Nobody cares what you have to say. I, 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 Aaron, what do you have? I would choose what Nick said. Okay. <laughs> on point as usual. All right, so Aaron. The, Aaron. Previous question from Josh about that optic. It's the Athlon Aries ETR. Hmm. Let me look this up. Yeah. I'm not familiar with that. I don't know either, actually. I know that we have talked about Athlon before, but I have not actually. Insert keyboards clacking. Yeah. And uh, angry breathing. (laughs) That's really irritating to listeners. Yeah. No, that's that's angry breathing. You said insert angry breathing. So I'm trying to look. Oh, there's the reticle right there. Hmm. Okay, just stop before I <laughs> snap. <laughs> yeah, please stop because he's next to me. He's gonna he's gonna kill me first. Uh, it doesn't even look like it has a. No, it doesn't really look like it has a dot. It yeah. looks like no, it just has crosshairs. Void. No, there's a there's a dot there's a dot in the middle of that void. Oh yeah, there is. Okay, but it's still smaller than the like, lines. It's like not a complete the... crosshair. Yeah, that's fine. Like that's a, f- but I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily want that. Op- that's a fine optic. I would just want it in MOA. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that is that is kind of a it, it. That is a tiny ass little dot. And then let me look at the the mill. Looking at their MOA reticle, and it's got an actual cross there in the middle, which is seems dumb, but but. Like, like just give me that other one, but do the same thing, on the other one, but make the lines in MLA, and I'm I'm right to the point with this one. Yeah, man, I, I with don't that know. specific model, I kind of like the dot on the on the mill, but I I, I definitely understand the the conundrum. I'm more of a feather yeah. kind of guy. Dot not feather. Yep. No right. other way around. Yeah, whatever. I like my I like my uh, Vorti. Your Vorti? <laughs> what hey, Nick, Nick read the next question. All right. No, Nick just read that question. Jeremy, read the next question. Zach C says, dick size, size Nick or Nick size Dipple. <laughs> All right, so that cut out a lot. So, Dipple size Nick or Nick size Dipple. So, Dipple size Nick, because you can, ima- can you imagine a bunch of Nick size Dipples running around here? What is a dipple? It doesn't matter. I don't want a Nick size anything. I barely even I want you one here. Nick. That's all we need. One <laughs> Just Nick. one Nick. Mm. I would go Nick size dipple. Uh, I would say, dipple. No, I say dipple size Nick. Yeah, no. Nick size dipple because a bunch of me would be cool. 
Oh, and, and Josh says, well, it's too late anyway. The, the mill reticle version shows up tomorrow. Oh, well, <laughs> Josh, why did he even yeah. ask? Well, f- you anyway. Uh, anyway, Zach, I hope that answered your question because Wait. now I'm actually terrified of a bunch of Nick sized dipples running around over here. <laughs> you. Uh, let's see. Aaron? Next uh, question. I, d- I read the last one. Oh, okay. I'll take it. Travis R. Love the show. I just wish we could have half the stuff here in New Jersey that you talk about and that I could afford half the stuff you talk about. Hashtag hair money. My father taught me how to shoot with an old Winchester 190 lr that was missing the magazine tube. Oh, it's like my high point uh, compensated C9 that's missing half of a grip. I'm looking to get my son into shooting and for him to have some of the same experiences. I'm not a super user like you guys. LOL, LOL. But I like to get out shooting a few times a year. I went around to a few of the local stores and shopped out a used 22 LR for my son. I was wondering which of the which of these each cast member would recommend and why. Sean, I know you hate 22, so you don't have to answer. Aw. Uh, Winchester 190, a Marlin 60, a Marlin 795, a Ruger 1022, a Mossberg 702, a Savage 64, a Remington 597. Uh, in addition to each cast member saying which one they'd rather have, any of those that we recommend he stays away from. P.S. I use the New Jersey State Police email address in this contact form, so feel free to spam away. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, Jeremy, of those 22s, which one would you want? Um. Marlin model 39. Okay. Not an option, but thank you for that. Nick. Uh, I would go with either like the 39 a Wait, or why the f- wouldn't you guys go with the 10 22? That's the one I would go with yeah. or the 10 22. Okay. That was, that was my, you know. the 10 22 seems to be the most obvious choice. You have box mags, you have, uh, extended mags, you have lots of magazine options for the 10 22. I mean, you have lots of everything options. Like, uh, a 1022 yeah, is like options. an AR or a Glock. Like you can literally build a 1022 and not have any of the parts be Ruger. So yeah, uh, yeah I would go 1022 just because of all of the options. Yeah. And I would stay away from any of the tube fed ones. I have a tube fed one. Yeah. I, I, I have some, I just, you know, it, I'm always leery about anything that where you have to deal with the front of the muzzle while you're loading it. Yeah. Uh, I know, I know there's a little notch in there where you can like pull it almost out and you can drop them in there. But at the same time, to me, it's like you're right there anyhow. I will say, man, that we shot the the Marlin 60 conversion from Hunting Tactical, their HT60, at the range the other day. And holy c***, it was so much fun. Like, the whole time, I was just giddy, like, doing entire uh, tube dumps into the steel targets. And, uh, is that what you do to, to Nick? Yeah, tube dumps. I mean, <laughs> it, it was fun, but would it have been any less fun if it was a 1022? No, no. If it was... You know, like a box mag fed. But I, I, I enjoyed the the Marlin sixty. I, I, I have a ten twenty two, and I really had fun shooting twenty two out of it. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with those other guns. I'm just saying a box mag is easier to feed uh, or e- easier to load, and they're easier to swap. You know, yeah. you can you can stuff a couple of mags in your pocket, and plus I have twenty five round magazines that I bought before July first, I mean, two thousand thirteen. Right. There's there's a re- reason there's a reason to over. T- the Marlin Model 60 as America's 22. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Um, so hopefully that answered your question. I think that'll do for the questions tonight. Aaron, you can go ahead and mark those down. And uh, thank, you, thank you to all the people who submitted questions. I uh, hope we answered them. And if we didn't, email us back and we'll try again next time. We like shooting.com slash Dear WLS is the place that you can go. And uh, let's talk about Bowers Group. We are filming tomorrow, and Nick, you're going to do something with the Biddy Suppressor? Yeah. Yeah, so we're going to start doing a new uh, short or a new series that is uh, basically cocktails made involving the Biddy Suppressor. Yeah. It'll be like, it's cocktails, it's cocktails, <laughs> it's cocktails with Aaron and Nick. I mean, Sean and Nick. <laughs> Wait, what? Sort of, except so- the theme song will be different, and there will be less Sean and more Nick. <laughs> yes. Uh, no, you, know what you should do. I'm going to be there. I'm going to drink the. Have you, have you considered uh, freezing the bitty, putting it in the in the ice box, and just using it as as like rocks? I mean, we we have, or I have. I also uh, speak for me. Determined the uh, internal volume of a bitty suppressor today. 
Oh, nice. Um, so I can also use it as a jigger to measure out. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. J, J, jigger. Oh, okay. All okay. right, Should calm we... down. It's a, a it's a bar yeah. measurement well, tool. I, I was triggered there. So the Biddy the Biddy suppressor is pretty awesome. We've been shooting the Verse 458 and the Biddy a lot lately. Uh, we're going to add the Verse 30 very soon. Uh, <laughs> Who knows? To, to the mix. Maybe there will be a Verse 458 uh, cocktail. <laughs> Dude, yes. <laughs> okay, that's this. Now this I'm kills in. the Nick. <laughs> now I am in. Uh, it, Indeed, you'll have alcohol poisoning and <laughs> lead poisoning. Bowersgroup.com, coupon code WLS gets you $15 off your order. And that could be like a suppressor cover, whatever whatever you're actually ordering. It is good to go. We have this other segment on the show called Not Guns. Not Guns, Not Gear, Just the Gang. Hashtag Not Guns. All right, Aaron, what do you have for us this week? I Get want that. to Socks, guys, socks. Um... What color socks do you guys wear? Dude, okay, so I went to an event and Real Dirty Harry from Instagram was there and I was uh we were in Florida and this I was wearing white ankle socks and he's like white socks what the are you doing? He made fun of me for like 5 days straight. So now I only wear black <laughs> socks. <laughs> are they compression socks, Sean? No, they're only ankle socks, so. Okay, okay. Nick uh, I, I wear. I, I, I got the gout. <laughs> I, I only have black socks, and it's not really for any reason other than they match with everything. I basically only own black everything, and I can mix and match them and not worry about brand. That's a good point. Yeah. Uh, Jeremy? I have got, several. What? I was going to guess white socks, but go ahead. No, I have, uh, I have several. Uh, most of my socks uh, are black because my favorite sock are the uh, Thorlos. And, but uh, I have, I think I have gray ones on right now. I got gray. What? He's are, got, are you colorblind and not not sure if they're gray or green? Well, they they <laughs> no, were they were white. No, I, no, I mean, I got I got I got gray. I, I wear boot socks, so most of them are like gray wool or black wool or. Or, or and then I got some like old um, military socks that are green because in the core you, your socks had to either be black or green. So I still have some green socks left. I still have. And then I got a lot of Thor lows because those are my favorite, but they're like twenty bucks a pair, but they're god worth it. So I will say that uh, Jeremy stands his socks up next to his boots. <laughs> <laughs> they are heavily starched. <laughs> But it's natural man starch. All right. So if you'd like to tell us, you can go he to comes we, in his socks. We like shooting dot com <laughs> slash show and uh, click on contact us and you can tell us what he, kind of socks you wear. He calculates it. How, how can I make this more? We clear? got it. Uh, I, I wear black socks. If anyone cares. Oh, <laughs> Aaron, wow. I'm that's sorry. up. Sean. Yeah, got it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Wow. It's why, why do you wear know, black socks, Aaron? Yeah. Why? Gosh. Uh, I, you know what? I, I used to wear white socks all the time. And then someone made fun of me, uh, so I, I moved to black socks. I still have white socks in the drawer in case all my black socks are dirty. But I like gold toes. I don't know. Uh, I, I like that brand. That's what I wear. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I mean, like I, everything in my wardrobe is black or gray, like I or somewhere. You and yeah, Morrissey. Right. Everybody yeah. hurts. Well, yeah, it goes with everything. <laughs> can we? Can we just move on? No. All right, no. rubber, rubber dummies are targets no. that you shoot. They're made of rubber and they're dummies, and you shoot them. And you can shoot them thousands of times, and they, st- so they many stand times. up. Yeah, so many all the times, really. all the times. Yeah, and I think that's important because you got to be able to shoot stuff all the times. And you know, you t- you put a paper target up, and you can shoot it a few times, and then you can't tell where you're hitting anymore. So you got to go do that with a rubber dummy. You just shoot it, and then when you're done, you go walk over and spray paint it, and then you shoot it a bunch more times. And you know, eventually, after thousands and thousands and thousands of rounds. Uh, the head comes off, but that's only for friends or head like ours. Yeah. Or, you know, sometimes you shoot the head a bunch of times with shotgun slugs and then saw it off the rest of the way with a knife. All right. Yeah, that's fair. So anyway, go check out Rubber Dummies, rubberdummies.com. Coupon code WLS saves you 10%. Their new stands are the bomb. Right, Nick? Absolutely. Yeah. Do you even know what I said? Yeah. The new, uh, the new stands are, a bom- are the bomb. Yeah, they actually are. A bomb. Not a bomb, but the bomb. I've seen a rubber dummy used as a bomb. Yeah. 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 Medic! (laughs) (laughs) That was so funny. 
industry news. Aaron, what do you got? Tonight, we're going to talk about some pretty cool things. John, you were talking about some, uh, uh, what was that, sighting scopes the other day. Yeah, we have the sight mark latitude that we've been using. Uh, yeah, the Nova Nova Grade Double Gripper actually has a, a cell phone adapter that you can use with the with the uh, uh, optic. Boom. Yeah, which I think is a great thing. You know, I mean, it's a better screen. You record stuff. I'm really a huge fan. And we've been using the phone scope, which is actually a case for your specific phone. This one looks like it'll support any phone, which is kind yeah, of interesting. Which is nice. You know, when I when I saw this in the show notes, I actually thought it was a reference to The Witcher. Because there's a city in the in the Witcher called Novigrad, not Double which, Gripper, <laughs> which, which is yeah, not not Double Gripper. I dated a girl with one of those. <laughs> oh, it turned out it was a guy. All right, go hey. ahead. Oh, so, yeah, so this one actually looks kind of cool. I wonder if you could yeah. hook it up to like an optic. No, it looks like it's just for set. Oh no, yeah. you can actually put it on an optic. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. Okay, that's that's pretty cool. I want to get one of these. The Nova Grade Double Gripper. Double Gripper. Yeah. That's such a terrible name. It, it yeah. really is. That's the, my the porno. The naming conventions these days are just like a bunch of drunk guys sitting around. Yeah. I, that's what I mean, I'm guessing. pretty much everything is a bunch of drunk guys sitting around. It, it Not that is. there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> what do those run? Uh, Well, they don't have feet. No, I mean, uh, what, what kind of price? <laughs> um, is it listed there? Because I didn't see it anywhere else. Yeah, it's one sixty nine for the double gripper and one forty nine for the single gripper. Uh, that oh, is that is a little pricey. I'm not gonna lie. You know, but it, I, I think uh, durability over time, if it works, and especially if it's if you if you can move it from uh, from site to site, you know what I mean. Yeah. Value added right there. Value added, sir. Yeah. Next story. Rock Island Armory imports imports the new uh, VRPB. It's a uh, semi-automatic bullpup shotgun. Uh, Rock Island Armory, welcome to the club. Uh, I like I like it. It looks it looks kind of funky, but uh, I-, I I'm okay with that. What do you guys think? It does look interesting. So the the other shotgun that they just had uh, release at Shot Show, ours will be here tomorrow. But now I'm kind of pissed off because I want the bullpup. Yeah, right. It's it's de- definitely interesting looking. I would I would shoot the shit out of that. It, the stock is weird as shit. Why why does it have an adjustable cheek piece? I don't know. In like, case you want, in case you're not knocking your jaw around enough. Well, I that that's what I don't get is it's the same with like AR stocks. Like what optic are you mounting that is so big that it needs to be higher than like an AR height optic mount right because so far I have not encountered one. I'm sure there's one out there, but so far I have not found one. Uh, and and this is the same thing because your your cheek essentially sits in line with the the sights or the the top rail, so if you use like an AR height optic, you should be fine. So why why the cheek it's, riser? It's riserception. It's a riser on a riser. I I just I I just don't get it. Height over bore is fourteen inches. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that uh, VHS. What was it? South African rifle that has like. The height over the height over board literally is like fourteen inches on it. I don't remember. Uh, this one is going to be six to six six hundred to six hundred seventy dollars um, MSRP. I think that's more expensive than the other shotgun, which, if I recall correctly, was four to five hundred dollars. So the bullpup is definitely more expensive. I don't know. I'm interested. Uh, I can't wait to get the other uh, Rock Island Armory shotgun, and then we'll we'll get this one into and, and talk about it soon. Guys, is Rock Island Armory kind of killing it with shotguns these days? Mm, I don't know. We'll find out. They put out one at Shot Show, and now this one at NRA. We'll I mean, find just out the soon. looks of them are pretty cool. Yeah, I, I'm definitely interested. Uh, next, next news story. Hey, one of my favorite companies, Matador Arms, introduces a new uh, the Mag X, which is an AR-15 magazine adapter that will fit the P320. So that's pretty cool. I mean, um, there's a lot of different companies out there, you, you know, uh, that have it for the Glock mag or for the Colt style mags, but now uh, the P320. Pretty cool, huh, guys? I think this is actually pretty cool. P320, yeah. I mean, especially with the Department of Defense contracts that they got, those mags are going to be pretty ubiquitous and easy to find and not incredibly expensive. So, yeah, I questioned, I questioned this choice originally. I was like, what the f***, the 320? But the more I thought about it, the more it actually made sense because there's there's people making the Glock stuff, there's people making Smith and Wesson M&P mag uh, magwell adapters, and I was like, you know what, three twenty, this is this is actually kind of uh, kind of clever in my opinion. 
Yeah, I mean, we are uh, sitting next to, in our midst, there is a 320-er. Yeah, there's probably a 320 mag in this Ugh. room right now. Ugh. You know what? There's probably seven 320 mags in this probably. room. Probably. Look, I have one right yeah, here. Exactly. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, I, I get it. I, it. Yeah, makes sense. And that's like $17 worth of ammo in my hand right now. Oh, yeah, no. Unload them, put it in your pocket, give the mag back. Hey! That's what I'm doing. Yeah. These don't unload as easily as pretty much every other mag ever. They actually... Well, if you want to unload faster and easier, just pull the trigger. <laughs> there's only yeah. 13 rounds in this 15-round mag, by the way. Interesting. Well, there's zero now, but... Well, yeah. Here you go. You know, if you, if, and, and you can use a Beretta mag and have Savage do something to it, and it'll work in the... Right. The oh, yeah. Yeah, it gets cut a hole in it. So, Matador Arms, I... I you should have just thrown all those loose rounds across the room. <laughs> Oh. That, that that would have been awesome. Um, so yeah, the three twenty mag adapter I think is is pretty cool stuff, and I am absolutely uh, thinking that they did a, a good cool thing yeah. that hit a niche of the market that no one is really into yet. Now the mag adapter, if I recall correctly, it was a little bit pricey one one hundred fifty dollars. Um, but yeah, if you have a lot of 320 mags and you want to shoot nine out of your AR, this pops right into a regular standard AR lower, and you can instantly use those. Now, another thing to keep in mind too is that Matador Arms is a Canadian company, uh, so so their laws are a little different up there, and I believe it is harder to acquire firearms, right? So making one lower go further is kind of a kind of a big deal. Yeah, uh, I like it. I like it. A eh? next. A story, uh, Aaron. This one, this one's got me really excited. Why are your kids awake? First of all, uh, we we have family in town for the funeral. Okay, well, I'm going to tell you, you this right can now. Can you Could put you them down? Please tell them to shut the f- up. I'm, dude. I'm losing it here. I mean, I, I mean, yell. I mean, put them down for bed. Are you just Not mute like, and then f- and flip f- them down. And, <laughs> yeah, mute. Flip. F- we'll watch you go insane. You know what? Put it on the speaker, and Jeremy's going to take care of this. Dude, put him down like a rabid dog. <laughs> All right, oh, yeah. this next story. These are cool. So, yeah, easy you accuracy. You need to pull an old f- kid. What? Easy accuracy. Hi, guys. Hi, I sorry. You need to pull it on those. Okay. Kids. Okay. <laughs> well, it's quiet. Let me do the story. <laughs> easy accuracy introduces the easy 60 offset fiber optic sights, and these are pretty freaking cool. Uh, so it's basically like pistol fiber optic sights instead of uh, your standard typical 45 sights that you see on an AR-15. And uh, they're at a 60-degree angle rather than a 45 because they say they're easier to acquire. at that. Just by You don't have to turn your gun as much. Or do you have to turn it more? I feel like you have to turn it more. Less. Yeah, it says, oh yeah, so it says that it real, they realized a 60 degree offset doesn't require the user to manipulate the rifle much more, and it ensures the sights will clear the large turrets found on some scopes today. So it is further than a 45, because you're, oh, you're at 90, 45. Further. Yeah. So I do think that these look pretty cool. I have no idea if I would use them. In fact, I do have some 45 degree offset sights on a couple different rifles, and I don't ever fucking use them at all. But. Ever? I don't. Uh, I, I I don't agree with his uh, this guy's statement that says that traditional offset sites are based on military sites and they're not they're not made for accuracy. I would wager that aperture military sites are much more precise than pistol sites. That is a really good point. These yeah. these do look exactly. They are pistol sites instead of like the normal. They're Williams. They're William Williams sites. Yeah. They're Williams sights in a dovetail. That's all they are. Yep. Williams fiber optic sights in so, a dovetail. Yeah. So don't don't tell me pistol sights are more f-ing accurate than aperture military, aperture and post military sights. That's f-ing incorrect. Like a f-ing. otherwise, military rifles would have f-ing Williams f-ing on them. So they are they are interesting. I am interested in them. Uh, what did they run? 115 bucks. That's not bad at all. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, I agree. And here's I mean, the thing. Didn't... Like, so, I mean, 45 degree offset, that's for like, if you're kind of, if you're zoomed in on your optic and you're hitting hard and then you need to come in close and do some CQB kind of stuff. Like, that's what I see those as being useful for. Cause clearly, you know, if you take your, your rifle off level, you're going to be less accurate at long distances. So I see those sites as CQB and to be able to put actual pistol sights on that rail, 
um, you know, for, for close quarter kind of stuff, I think it's going to be pretty useful. Uh, that's my thought. All right. Uh, next story. Uh, Marlin debuts a dark series of the 1895 and the 336 lever action gun. So the dark series is uh, basically a dark gun, dark wood. Uh, what is that? Um, uh, where they, they make the barrel all dark. That's basically racist. Uh, no. Oh, I can't believe you went there. That's racist that you went there. <laughs> they parkerize everything and, and it's dark wood. So it's just dark. And it looks good, man. Uh, I'm not going to lie. A dark looking uh, firearm. Uh, while you know ph- photography wise is not that good, uh, actually style wise is because it goes with everything really. Yeah, it's like kind of like Nick needs one. It's murdered out, dude. Black is very slimming. Right? Is that why you do it, Nick? Do your feet look skinny? Black socks. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I wear I wear brown boots, so I don't know. not really. I guess. Yeah. Consider dyeing them. No, I haven't. All right. Well, that sounds good. Hey, let's start to wrap this thing up. There's a place you can go. It's lovewls.com. That's L-O-V-E-W-L-S.com. There's four things that you can do there. Aaron, number one. You can become a rooftopper. Nick, number two. You can find a list of our sponsors and promo codes that go with those sponsors. You can buy cool stuff like the hoodie that Nick's wearing. You'll be able to buy this hat on on the website the, what about next, next week. The hoodie that Aaron is wearing. The hoodie that Aaron is wearing and the shirt that's, that Aaron is wearing. He's Ooh. like Superman. He like unzipped. Oh, dude, that's actually a pretty cool effect. Yeah, you like that? I, I do uh, that on purpose. And Ju- that Judson Judson's is got a We Like Shooting shirt on. It's a, it's a thing. You can buy them all there. Uh, and last but not least is you can become a Patreon and get access to our Patreon-only Facebook group, which is always fun. Uh, you get access to the podcast, unedited and uncensored every single week. I like to say it's unfiltered. Unfiltered. I, th- I think that is a, is a great way to explain it. And it's all available. Love WLS.com. Um, you know what? Join a gun related advocacy group, whether it's firearms policy coalition, gunners of America, uh, second amendment foundation, you know, the NRA exists. It's a member's organization. I want a strong NRA and I'm, I'm fighting to fighting to get it there. And I, I think you should too. Also go check out uh, the episode that we did. It's we like shooting NRA under fire episode zero zero one. It's in our main feed. You can find that at we like shooting.com slash show or in Apple or Google or iHeartRadio, or every well, everywhere else that fine podcasts are served. We always give out the suicide, suicide bleh, 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 easy for me to say. <laughs> Fuck my life. We always give out the suicide prevention line. The number is 1-800-273-8255. That's 1-800-273-TALK, or you can text the number 741741. Uh, honestly, guys, like use that number. There's people there that are prepared to help. They have the, the skills necessary to help, and uh, they can help get you through some dark times. Also... We're here live. Every Racist. Week, we're here live every week on Mondays and Wednesdays and on demand every day. Go to we like shooting.com slash show to subscribe. And as we always say, thanks for listening. Get some medical training and who shoot took straight. Nick's took neck socks? socks. Oh. Nick. Shoot straight. That's the other show. Yeah. Oh. You're f-ing this all up, man. All right. You know why else people should listen to uh, the Under Fire episode? Why? Because it is the episode that made my father tell me that he is proud of me. Crazy? Yeah. 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 Everything else you've ever done has not impressed him at all. Uh, Like three things that I've done in my life have impressed him. Nick told me this the other day and I was like, God, dude, that's like, it it saddens me, but also. uh, Not a, no, it doesn't sadden me at all. Also, I'm proud of you. Because when he says it, it means, like, it really means it. That's why everybody should go listen to it. It's, it's important. Yeah. Just go listen to it. NRA Under Fire. Yeah. It's Jeremy. I'm sure your dad would be yeah. proud of you for it, too. If he could yeah. be. Jeremy's gone. <laughs> yeah, I got really nervous, nervous yesterday because I was talking to my mom. She's like, oh, I was listening to We Like Shooting. Like, <laughs> oh, no. Like, oh, that dude. makes me nervous, too. She didn't hear a f- she didn't, dead dad joke. Oh, something. God. I hope she didn't hear that shit I said Monday night. did you think that show was worth a dollar help the cast by visiting lovewls.com